I thank you for joining us. It's a blessing uh, to speak with you. I know that this is a busy time in U.S., especially a very busy time of the year of people preparing for Christmas and all of that. And uh, when Paul asked me to have two messages for December, I prayed and asked God, well, what should I talk about? And, uh, and I just kept waiting for a thought to come from the Lord. And what I got was disappointment. So I thought, that's interesting. Uh, and uh, maybe not, because... I think expectations run pretty high at Christmas time in a lot of families, with the kids especially, um, but parents too. And uh, in the United States, and I know this gets all over the world, but in the United States with the 19 thing, um, there's a lot of disappointments because it's the sickness, being laid off, all that stuff. Uh, can cause a lot of disappointments. And so how do I deal with disappointments? And where do they come from? And how can I handle them so I don't get really down in the dumps, um, really low uh, in spirit? Uh, so I prayed and asked God, and I didn't want a lot of scripture, but scriptures, I just wanted enough that we can kind of grab a hold of and uh, make it ours. And as I was praying, I said, Lord, what, what scripture should we start with? What, what's a scripture that can help with disappointments? And the first one was 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 19. Uh, and this is... Uh, as I thought on this list, and I had plenty of time to meditate, and when you meditate on something, it's um, it's what a cow does, uh, chewing the cud, getting all the good out of it. And you just think about the verse, and you go over the verse and over the verse. And as I thought about the verse, I thought, well, if I was going to title this verse, I would title it a great, a great list for healthy living. You know? How can I live a healthy life? I mean, it's an awful lot of Bible, but sometimes it's some verses just seem to be hit the nail on the head. It's all I need. I grab a hold of that and go with it. And the first um, list there, the first word in the list is rejoice always. Um, I'm fortunate. Um, after I became a believer, especially, I was always happy. Um, when I was in the Army, uh, they had a nickname for me. The doctor said I was a medic working in the medical corps, and they called me Sunshine. I always happy, smiling, coming in. <laughs> I guess I didn't know enough to worry. <laughs> just dumb and happy uh, and just rejoicing. Brand new Christian, I'm just rejoicing in the Lord. And he says, rejoice always. And see, rejoicing is a choice. I could choose to rejoice or choose not to rejoice. We'll get into this a little bit more. But God is saying, rejoice always. Why? And I think it's because he's sovereign. He's in control. God's best for me may not be on my list of what I think is best. <laughs> you know, God's best and mine may differ a little bit. Uh, and there's some conflicts. And I've had conflicts with God. <clears throat> I'm sure that I'm talking to you that are all over the world. You haven't had any conflicts with God. But I've had some where I didn't agree. <laughs> I thought my way was better. The way I thought things should turn out would be better. And so on. <clears throat> so I can always choose to rejoice. And then he says, pray without ceasing. And that means that, uh, you know, I know that in the war movies, uh, when the pilots were talking on their phone, they would say, over and out. 
So when I'm praying to God, it's not over and out. <laughs> it's I'm not to put an end on it. Pray without ceasing. So I'm not to put an end. I, I'm to be in a talking uh, mood with the Lord as I go through the day. Share the day with him. Share what you see. Uh, I, uh, <clears throat> I pastored in some very beautiful places. I have a guy visiting me right now, and he was in Northern California. And Northern California, although California has gone through a lot of struggles right now, but Northern California is a very beautiful place. And it's, it's amazing. Uh, they're probably one of the most beautiful waterfalls in the world is in Northern California. And people don't even know it's there. Unbelievable waterfall to go. When people visit us, they go and they couldn't believe it. It's a waterfall that's semi-circle and it goes all around you. And it comes through the rocks and comes down. It's just Bernie Falls. It's absolutely beautiful. And people have said, I've seen waterfalls Many, many countries, but I've never seen one as beautiful as this one. But so many uh, beautiful places for trees. It's just really a beautiful place. And it's very easy to rejoice and to pray to God and just enjoy the beauty of creation. And he says, in everything, give thanks. Now, that isn't so easy. Everything? Did they make a mistake when they translated the Bible? Is it really everything? Some things give thanks. I'll go with that. But everything? What about the disappointments? And what's a disappointment? <laughs> It's something that I didn't give thanks for, I can tell you. <laughs> I, I get down on the disappointments. That's why I think this is important because expectations run high at Christmas time in America anyway. So the idea is why should I give thanks for everything? And I was just a brand new Christian. I wasn't a Christian, I don't think, four months when I was drafted in the army. And uh, so I didn't have my, I had no church background going up and I had no ch much church background after I got saved. Uh, there wasn't a church uh, that was a Bible believing type of church in walking distance for where I lived. Uh, so I didn't get a lot of church, but it did have verses that I was memorizing, a little packet of verses. So he said, <clears throat> why should I give thanks for everything. And why is a good question. You could say, well, why, why, why? It says, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Um, that helped me a lot. Uh, I was one time I ran over a squirrel. And I was sick for days uh, because I killed that squirrel. Now I'm in the army and I'm learning how to stick knives into people and kill them and to shoot them, throw hand grenades and blow them to pieces, all of that. I was having a hard time. <laughs> I had a hard time with squirrels. How would I handle actually taking somebody and sticking a knife in them? It, it was very difficult for me in the army. And so... I knew this verse it was one of the verses I learned in the beginning and everything give thanks. How could I give thanks that I know how to kill people, uh, you know, quietly uh, where they don't make a noise and all this stuff. But uh, it was God's will for me because our country was at war. I was drafted in the war. If I didn't do my part, then other guys were in jeopardy. If I wasn't willing to shoot, then what about the guys around me? They were counting on me to shoot the enemy. They were shooting at us. So anyway, uh, so the idea is when I am not willing to accept God's will where I am, I will quench the spirit. And that is I box in the Holy Spirit and I will not hear the Holy Spirit. You can look up quench. We did in the other video uh, that we that this one is followed. We did a, uh, a lesson on quenching. 
uh, from the Greek, what does it mean? But it's like putting out the Holy Spirit's fire. It's like shoving him down where I am not sensitive to him. So I have to realize that unforgiveness and, and uh, disappointments are really part of unforgiveness. I, I'm, it didn't go the way I wanted. This didn't happen the way I wanted. And I'm really disappointed. Or My prayer wasn't answered as I prayed. Uh, so I'm really disappointed with God. I told God what I wanted to happen, and, and somehow he didn't agree with me. And uh, so I'm upset. Um, so I don't want to put out the Spirit's fire. Now, how do I be content? And I was wrestling with it as a brand new Christian and not in church. The army didn't have church. There were no Christian guys that I know of. They were in my group, and there were hundreds of us. Uh, and I think this is really the answer, is contentment is realizing that God is in control. Thank God I'm not in control, but God is. And I'm a part of that. And I need to accept what's happening I need to adjust my thinking. I need to adjust my plans. Uh, God is in control. Now, when I don't sense that, this next thing comes in. Scripture says, worry about nothing. Well, if God's not in control, I have a lot to worry about. If everything is by chance and may happen or whatever uh but he says worry about nothing so what do i do when i worry w what do i do when i sense that i'm worrying that my there's this unrest in my spirit i'm struggling inside what do i do and he says this is romans 8 28 worry is god's call to prayer I need to get God's perspective. I need to sense the presence of God with me. And not being uh, a guy that loved the army, uh, but I, I learned so much by being in the army and it was a very blessing for me. But I would worry, can I really do this? Uh, they will want me to do things I've never done. They want me to perform things physically that I've never done before. Uh, will I be able to do that? And I really learned to pray a lot uh, in the army. It's probably the best. I had not been in church much, but I'll tell you, I had a prayer meeting with myself and I would just be talking to God. Uh, when we go on a hike, Lord, help me to make it. The hikes were, the temperature would be over a hundred degrees and we're in full uniform, metal helmets and all that. And the metal helmet it doesn't seem to keep the heat out. <laughs> it's a, it, unbelievable. But, you know, I just it was an opportunity to trust God. Can God meet my needs? Can I walk with the Lord? Will he answer my prayers? Will he give me the, the, the power to get through this day through something I've never done before? And it was so amazing as I would lay this out before God and just I would be talking to him on a, on, on a march. Uh, which would be hours of marching or hours of walking and just having conversations with the Lord. I'll tell you, it's, it's wonderful when God is real to you, you know? So what happens then, you know, um, when we worry, what happens when I have a disappointment? When you have a disappointment, then give that disappointment to God. That is a, a God's calling you to pray. You know, God, I give it to you. You deal with it. You handle it. You take care of this. Uh, when it's beyond my ability to handle or to deal with it, just put it in God's hands. Trust him uh, to deal with this thing. Also, I need to give my expectations to God, not only my worries, but my expectations to God. Uh, you know, the, one of the greatest 
areas of disappointment that we're, that we're going to have has to do with expectations. Uh, something is going to happen and you expect it to happen and it doesn't happen. You hire somebody to work and you have real expectations how things are going to turn around and go and they don't go. And, you know, and so, see, expectations are the greatest source of disappointments because when they're not met, you know, and I'm a guy that was very easily up and down. And a lot of my life, I lived more in the basement than I did on the first floor. <laughs> I would want this to happen. Boom, I go down. Boom, I go down. It was a very disappointing teenage years and all of that, living with an alcoholic that was out of control and mean and all of that. So I, I knew what it's like to be down a lot and depressed a lot. And so I didn't have expectations that tonight is going to be nice. My sister and I have talked about it. We never had expectations that the evening would not be without horrible fighting and fears. And if you've lived with alcoholics, you know, or an alcoholic, you know what I'm talking about. And so, you know, after a while, I didn't have major disappointments because uh, I didn't expect things to be nice at night at all. It was nice before my dad came home, but after he came home, it would just go downhill into a lot of fear and horrible stuff. So how can I do, if you have a lot of expectations, and I want it, my, my, I don't want my Christian life to be like a yo-yo, up and down, up and down, up and down. You know, I'm always up if everything's right, but I've got, this is going to be good, and it doesn't go, and then I, you know, crash down again, is give your expectations to God. And if God withholds them, then thank him. God has a perspective that I don't. And I need to give them to God. Uh, we had a terrible loss in our family. Uh, my son and his wife and my grandson are all dead. This is the first Christmas. Uh, with them and my granddaughter the only one that survived will be here at christmas time well she's going to be quite a distance from where i am and when it snows here or ice that highway is not a fun thing to be on at all so I'm not holding expectations that I will see her face to face. Mm -hmm. Because if I do and it doesn't happen, what will happen to everything? I'll just, I'll just hit the pits. And so I've learned that I'm more of an emotional person. And I've learned I had to take my emotional life and put it under the control of God. So that what happens, happens. So if... If I'm able to be with her and see her for the first time since this happened face to face, it'll be a blessing. If I don't see her, I can talk to her on the phone. That'll be a blessing. I'm giving it to God and trying to get everything so I don't crash because oh, it didn't happen the way I thought it should happen or would happen. So I just put it in God's hands and learn to do that. Because if you don't, you're going to have a lot of up and down in your life. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, so, you know, I want to do what I can, but if I can't, it's in God's hands. So I don't want your disappointments to wreck Christmas. Um, I mean, kids, some kids have high disappointments on what they want for gifts. And if they don't get them, then Christmas was terrible. I didn't get my whatever. You know, it flies around and uh, what I got doesn't fly anywhere. It just lays there. It doesn't do a thing. You know? I don't like it, you know, and I'm really down. It's like, and as I've looked over my life and thinking about this, the disappointments, I am really thankful that many of my prayers were not answered. Because I was praying from my perspective. But I trust that God sees the whole picture 
And he says, you don't understand for where you are that this would not be good for you. And so I'm able to thank God. And then I find that I'm not a yo-yo emotionally, up and down, up and down, just up and down. So uh, see, what causes disappointments for a lot of people? Just think of this. If you're disappointed, it's unfulfilled expectations. I expected it to be like this. I expected it to turn out like this. I expected they would or whatever. Uh, so I'm able to give my expectations to God. If I can go down and see my granddaughter, it's wonderful. If I can't go, that is okay. I'm not going to hit the pits. Uh, see, we need to abide in the secret place of the Lord. Now, we talked about her the most high. We've talked about the secret place a number of times, and we'll probably talk about it more. But how to cultivate the secret place, how to draw nigh to God. If I draw close to him, he draws close to me. How do I draw close from him? What's hindering my drawing to God? What's hindering my looking into the face of God? Do I have an intimate relationship with God? Do I just talk to him? You know, prayer is just talking. It's not uh, memorizing words and memorizing prayers. They may be helpful. I read some of the prayers of the people of the past, and they're a blessing. They don't they don't uh, discourage me because I'm not fancy and I don't have the fancy words and the beautiful words that they have. But uh, God lay it out before Him with your expectations when you pray and just leave it in his hands and God, your will be done. See, see I want to read this. This statement means a lot to me and I want to this to happen to me that I find that abiding in the shadow of the Almighty gives me the proper perspective on a situation. When I'm able to go to God and to share it with him and leave it with him, then whatever the answer is, whatever happens, I'm grateful. I'm grateful it happened. I'm grateful it didn't happen. I am trusting God. So I want to leave this whole thing a statement. I thought about this a lot. And if you take anything away, take this away with you, because I'll tell you, there's so many discontented people all over the place. See, if you're not content with what God has provided, will you be content with what he will provide? And this really one of the secrets of walking with God is contentment. I am contented. He's sovereign. He's in control. And I'm laying it out before him. And whatever he decides is fine with me. Father, I know right now there are people that have lost jobs, especially in America, but I assume maybe in other parts of the world, but there's been a lot of people losing their jobs because of the sickness that's going around. And they're in a, in a very hard place. Uh, especially if Christmas was a lot of buying expensive presents and toys and, you know, all of that stuff, uh, kind of missing really what Christmas is all about. Giving is fine but it's more than giving. So Father, I, I pray that they might give their expectations to you and give their disappointments to you because you're there and you can walk with us and we can lean on you. See, underneath of the everlasting arms, you're always there. You're always with us. And Father, help us to see your presence. Help us to walk through 
the disappointments and just give them to you. And Lord, learn to be grateful in everything. Give thanks for this situation you're in. God is in control. God has allowed you to walk through this. You're not alone. He's there. So give that to God and draw from him what you need to handle whatever you have to go through right now. And I'm sure I'm talking to people that had Christmases that were overabundantly overabundant and other they've had Christmas that were lean. I think it'd be very hard to find people that didn't have lean Christmases, difficult times, loss of, of job, uh, expenses they never expected to have, and, uh, and all of that. So, Father, may we keep our eyes on you and realize that you're there, and wherever we're faced with, that you're girding us up with the everlasting arms that we're not alone and we can share our needs our expectations our whatever with you and put them in your hands and see how you're going to provide and what you're going to do so lord i thank you and i i pray for all those that are listening some Maybe Christmas is going to be very easy for them. Everything is going well. But I do know some people right now that are close to me that are going through cancer and painful. And Christmas is going to be very difficult health-wise. And so, Father, I pray for those that are hurting Maybe there's sadness. Maybe there's physical pain. Uh, I don't know what they're going through, but Father, I pray. This is a time we focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. And may they turn their focus to him. who gave himself for them. He loves them. And I, I like the thought underneath of the everlasting arms. You said all things work together for good. And Lord, may we realize that all the things may be not be good. I remember once in college, one of the professors wanted us to understand the all things working together for good. And he brought in a beautiful, beautiful cake, fabulously decorated chocolate cake. But then he had a table and he had all the ingredients on it. And he said, we could take a spoon and take some flour, and some of this, some of that. Separately, I'll tell you, it was pretty awful. <laughs> Most of the people would not do it, you know, the ingredients by themselves. But together, they produced a beautiful cake. So I trust that your ingredients will produce a beautiful thing for you and your family. In Jesus' name, amen.